Sandpox is the relocation of some of the Kruger National Park's white rhino is indeed underway. This followed a rhino management strategy adopted by Cabinet in August to curb poaching. Locally, since 2008, over 3,600 rhino have been slaughtered and the body count continues to spiral with almost 800 rhino wiped out so far this year. Well, Jacques Flamont is the WWF's project leader in the Black Rhino Range expansion and he's now on the line. Uh, good afternoon, Jacques and uh, thank you for your time on the PM News Desk. Good afternoon. Uh, can you elaborate for us on the techniques used for rhino capture and, and relocation? How is a rhino captured and moved, Jacques? Uh, well, what we usually do nowadays is we locate a rhino or rhinos by means of a helicopter and the, uh, the ground crew that's going to carry the helicopter gets close to where they find the rhino uh, a vet in the helicopter will dart the rhino from the air, or the rhinos, and keep them in a confined area where the ground crew can come and pick them up. As soon as uh, rhinos fall down from the narcotics that we use, they are um, lined up with a crate and put in a crate and transported elsewhere. Mm. Uh, Jacques, uh, uh, what are some of the health risks uh, to the rhino uh, during the relocation? And, and how safe, of course, is this uh, during the summertime? Well, there are very few risks to rhino uh, with the drugs that we use. Uh, they're very safe on rhino, and uh, we have very few concerns. I mean, there's always an anesthetic risk, as with any species, that, in fact, we lose virtually no rhino to uh, the anesthetic procedure. Um, it's obviously better to do it when it's cool, but uh, with um, the speed with which we work, it's not a huge problem to do it in warmer weather. Uh, one obviously doesn't want the animal's temperature to go too high, but uh, you know, one can water the rhino and to keep them cool if it's excessively hot, but uh, very few risks to the rhino itself. Uh, you've done some extensive work with rangers themselves. Uh, are rangers in a war they're simply not winning? Uh, is it just a matter of not enough boots on the ground to fight this scourge, Jacques? Well, certainly boots on the ground is one thing. Uh, the other thing, don't forget, a, game, a lot of people went into game ranging because they, they loved the wildlife and the, the life uh, related to that, their passion for wildlife. And then that always trained as soldiers, which is what they've got to be today. I mean, fortunately, a lot of the rangers have been trained in, in uh, warfare. I mean, as you know, the poachers are um, armed and, of course, expose the rangers to huge risk. Uh, so that is increasing. But, you know, being on the ground is, is a key, basically. The more rangers you have on the ground, the less poaching we seem to get. Mm. Uh, how crucial is it for us at this point to implement uh, uh, conservation programs that benefit poor communities around the parks uh, where poachers are recruited? Well, one, um, one really wants to try and get far more communities involved in conservation and, and to make them stakeholders in rhinos is a key point and, and one which we try to implement with the Black Rhino Range Expansion Project. But it's very difficult because very many um, communities don't have the capacity to manage their wildlife. And so that's certainly something that we're trying to address uh, to increase the capacity of our communities to, to manage the wildlife and benefit from wildlife. But it's not easy. It's a very competitive market. Uh, you know, the ecotourism industry, very competitive today. So many people doing it. Um, so it's not easy. The WWF's uh, Jacques Flamand on the line there. Thank you for your time on the PM News Desk.